going to play into the end of the sermon, so hold all that information you got on that you just saw. <laughs> well, we'll bring it up later, okay, in a moment. Welcome to our uh, New Year's sermon, if you will. We had a little fun with that bumper. That song really did annoy me when my wife was recording that for the 28th time. <laughs> Can you put that on the uh, mute? <laughs> <laughs> but she really enjoyed it, really brought a jump to her spirit. Happy New Year 2022! Ready? Happy New Year! One, two, three! Happy New Year! Alright, let's share that with people who are live and they're not here this morning. One, two, three! Happy New Year! Now they're saying it to us, go! Yes, thank you! Awesome! We trust you did that. Alright, praise God. Alright, so don't... Here's the, here's the deal. Don't just claim God's promises. Let's fulfill them. Do you see the difference? Claiming God's promises, I'm not going to go too deep because I'm going to cover that in a minute. But don't just claim God's promises. Fulfill them. Be the one who's part of God touching people. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's something new through you. That's the second part of today. But the first part is going to be the new you in 22. The new you in 22. And before we get there, let's just do something funny a second. Are you, you ready for this picture for a second? All right. How many of you have written a check in 2022 yet? Oh! Did you sign it 2021 or 22, Nancy? I did 22. Did you? Good job. You're really on your game. Sometimes the first day you're like, don't, don't goof this up. And then sometime this week you're going to write a check and be like, and some of the young people are going like, I, what is a check? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so uh, if, you, if you've had to write 2022, how many have goofed it up yet? Now, if I have you raise your hand next week, I'm going to get most of you. Okay, okay I'm going to I'm gonna pick up my wife a second. We were sitting at the, the, the kitchen table, right, boys? And, and, and we were talking about the new year. And my wife said, welcome to 2017. Did that not happen? Did that happen? Welcome to 2017. I don't know where I was. What in the world? 2017. The good old days. I don't know. I don't know if she went back to her happy place or something, but she was not going to touch 2022. So um, I don't know what happened to my wife there, but that actually happened this week, just a couple nights ago. So we like to start with something funny now, um, just to prove that all this techie stuff. Is just old stuff being reborn, repackaged, right? There's nothing new under the sun. I'm going to prove that in this picture. Here we go. Technically, Moses was the first person with a tablet downloading data from the cloud. Come on! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Holy Moses was a man of God. You see, okay, you'll get that later if you didn't get it yet. All right, grab your Bible. Say thank you, Nina. This is my Bible. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. Lord, I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you just 
Help us to not be the same after today. Help us, Lord, to really get the, the newness of what you have for us down in our spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Okay, I, I couldn't go into the new year without rushing back to one last chosen clip. So to prepare the way for that chosen clip, I'm going to do so in the next few minutes and then show it to you. It's about five minutes long. Actually, we got a little short clip we're going to show first, then a little bit of a longer clip. But uh, in, in point one, become new in 22. We have to start there because I can't help somebody have newness in their life without something new happening in me. Amen? You can't share what you ain't got, right? If you don't have a hundred bucks, you can't give somebody ten. Right? You don't have... Some of us are like, man, I don't get it at all. <laughs> I want to share something new in 22, but sometimes the newness isn't in me to share. And, and I've gone through a couple stretches this week where the enemy is just, you know, kind of beating you down. Anybody been there? The enemy's just coming at different angles. And that door didn't work, so you're going to try this one. And then, he, then, he, then the serpent just works right through your spouse. Have you ever had that happen? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Fangs, <laughs> teeth, claws. We need a wall. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. I mean, if the enemy can't find one more, he'll try another. And, and this newness needs to be rekindled in me. We all, I think, want a new heart for God in 22. I think we all want a new attitude. I hope you want a new altitude. I hope you want some motivation. Anybody need motivation to get off the couch? Get out, get out of your comfort zone. Get out of the, the way of yourself, in essence. Lord, help us to have new love, new vision, new joy, new peace, new perspective in 22. So we're going to go back a few minutes to that John 3, verses 1 to 15. I'm not reading all those. You're going to see it acted out in front of you in a moment. Where Jesus shares with a Jewish pastor, his name is Nicodemus, the Pharisee, the teacher of the law. How to be new. How to be made new. You're going to hear it from Jesus to somebody who came and sought him out. This man was a professional pastor. He was a professor of the law. He was good at what he does. He was a keeper of the law. This guy was a good person. When you think of good, you would have been like Nicodemus. He's the man. It might have been how we feel about like Billy Graham. Right? Some, somebody of that stature. He would keep all of us. He accomplished and he was learned. He was wealthy. He was esteemed. He was loved. He was listened to. How many of you like, this sounds like what you see out on Facebook, right? You want to be loved. You want to have likes. You want to, you want to have people, you know, when you say something, they, 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 they listen and they, they're like just into it. This guy had everything he could want. But he meets Jesus and realizes everything he thinks he is, is absent. Everything, the essence of who he was, had such lack that he had to have a meeting with Jesus because something was missing in his life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So some of us are here going, yo, I, I can so relate to that. Yes, I, I've had a decent life. God's been good to me. But I feel the lack. The further I'm away from time with God, how much lack do we feel? Amen? Amen? It just piles up and it becomes... And my, my, my boys, you know, we played a game the other night. That's where this 2017 thing came out. And they're like, you know, the, you know you, the further we get into the pandemic, you would think we'd get closer to God. But the further we get into the pandemic, it feels like the colder... The church has gotten, the colder, the world has gotten, the colder, our faith has gotten. Now, if there's a great falling away, I'm only accountable for one person. That's me. If all fall away, how about going back to the disciples? Hey, if everybody falls away, not me, Peter says. And Jesus says, well, there you go. The night. The night. That might happen. 
But would we make a commitment, Lord, I will not back away from you one iota. Lord, draw me to you. This guy was professional. My point is, he just didn't understand because he got near the presence of Jesus and realized how empty all those things were that he had and could do and how he was esteemed and loved. It didn't matter. There was something missing. So we're going to start with this little one-minute clip a second. I want you to see this. And I'm not even going to draw this in a second. You can watch this. I'll draw it in in the next one if you're watching live. Here we go. I asked the owner of this house for more lanterns. He said they would draw attention. Yes, I imagine they would. The human eye is drawn to light. And that it just happens. There are many things we are drawn to without our thinking or our ability to explain why. Thank you for agreeing to meet. Thank you for trying to help Mary when you did. There's no help. You were meant to be there. Me? So you could fail miserably at an exorcism in the red water? If you had not been there that day, would you be on this roof tonight? If you'd not failed then, would you be here now? If you hadn't been through some things that you that didn't pan out for you, would you be in this room today? If you didn't go through some stuff that brought you to your knees, would you be watching right now? For many of us, the answer is no. From people in our lives who made a commitment to Christ who said, if I didn't go through that cancer, I wouldn't know Jesus before she died. Before she died. I, I, can, I can think of so many situations. The thief on the cross. Would you be in eternity if you weren't suffering next to the Son of Man? What are you going through? What are the things that that were rock bottom? What are the hardships? What are the losses? Do not curse the darkness in your life, which God can use to your advantage. I want to read that word for word as it came out, as the Spirit led me on that. Do not curse the darkness in your life, which God can use to your advantage if you let Him. Do you know, as I wrote curse for the sermon, I, I wrote it accidentally. My fingers got going. I misspelled it. And it, and it, you know what it formed? Same exact number of letters. Same exact letters. Cures. C-U-R-E-S. Would we let some of the curses of our life be the cures for somebody else's life? Amen. Amen. Would you let it? Because God wants to take everything and use it to the advantage. Not only yours, but somebody who doesn't know Christ yet. That can be, that can be your testimony that helps somebody else come out of a darkness that maybe you even chose. Right? Amen? Or maybe something you didn't choose, but it caught you up in this life. Don't let the enemy beat you down with that. Give it to God and see what God will do with that thing. So, as we set the lights down low again... For this next set segment, I want you to picture you know, Jesus is going to sit down with Nicodemus right here at this table in a second. And I want, to, I want you to picture you are Nicodemus. I want you to picture you are uh, just across the table from the Son of God, creator of the universe. And you are going to be stunned if you let Jesus speak to you words of life that bring newness. Here we go. I don't know where to start. I have so many questions. Shall we sit first? Oh, yes. Of course. The Eastern slums. Mm. Many wandering preachers have succeeded in gathering crowds with their rhetoric and fiery tone. I've heard a few of them over the years myself. So you know the type. Mm -hmm. 
but i have never heard anyone tell the paralytic to get up and walk much less it actually happened so what is your conclusion i believe you who are not acting alone no one can do these signs you do without having god in him only someone who has come from god and how is that belief going over in the synagogue <laughs> which is why we are here at this hour what else what have you come here to show us the kingdom that is what our rulers are worried about oh, not that kind that one a sort of kingdom that a person cannot see unless he is born again born again yes you mean right a new creature a conversion from gentile to jewish no no that's not what i'm talking about then what is born again i hope you don't mean return to the womb because that would be a problem for me my mother and she rest in peace is dead truly i say to you unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit that part of you that is what must be reborn to new life how can these things be Teacher of Israel and you do not understand this thing. I'm trying, Rabbi. I know. I know. Do you hear this? What? Listen. What do you hear? The wind. How do you know it's the wind? Because I can feel it. And I hear it sound. Do you know where it comes from? No. Do you know where it's going? No. That's what it is to be born again of the Spirit. The Spirit may work in a way that is a mystery to you. And while you cannot see the Spirit, you can recognize His effect. Mind is consumed with thoughts of what a stir these words would cause among the teachers of the law. Yes. And I do not expect otherwise. I speak of what I know and have seen, and it has not been received by the religious leaders. It is hard to receive. So if I have told you of earthly things, and you do not believe, how can I tell you heavenly things? I believe your words. I just fear you may not have a chance to speak many more of them before you are silenced. I have come to do more than speak words, Nicodemus. No miracles? Yes. But even more than that, do you remember when the children of Israel complained against God and against Moses in the wilderness of Paran? Yes, they wanted to return to Egypt and they cursed the manna that God sent them. And then they were bitten by serpents and they were dying. But, but God made a way for them to be healed. Moses lifted the bronze serpent in the desert and people only needed to look at it. So will the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. Our people are not dying from <laughs> snake bites. They're dying from taxation and oppression. I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I did not come to deliver the people from Rome. And from what? From sin. From spiritual death. God loves the world in this way. That he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So this has nothing to do with Rome. It's all about sin. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, Nicodemus. He sent him to save it through him. 
It's as simple as Moses' serpent on the pole. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Hmm. <coughs> that was you across the table from Jesus. What are some of your thoughts? What's your thought about the persona of Jesus? Go ahead and talk to me. What'd you like? Nancy? Yeah, to be born again, it's not the different things of the spirit. Yeah, and it's not of the, the flesh, it's of the spirit. I like how he, he reaches over the table and kind of puts his hand on his chest and says, It's in here, it's in your spirit. And, and, and I like how Nicodemus is going, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, just like us. You know, hey, this is going to be a problem if I got to go back and, you know, my, my mother's not here anymore. Um, not born again in, in a flesh kind of way, born again in our spirit. And I like, Jesus gives us some apologetics here, doesn't he? Hey, you know, feel the wind? Do you, do, do you feel that? You don't know where it's coming, you don't know where it's going. But you would say, it's it. The Spirit is here. You might not be able to see Him, but you can see His effect. And if you let Him into your life, give Him permission, He's courteous. He's not going to come in and just twist your arm. He's going to knock at the door of your heart and wait for you to engage. I don't care if you're a Christian for 35, 45, 50 years, 60 years, and you've gotten so ingrained in, in negative thinking, wrong processing, not trusting in Jesus and the Spirit of God, you and I can be here today as legalists or watching today in a legalist mindset and miss the Spirit of God wanting to work in you in love, in power. Amen? So Lord, check me. Check me. January 2nd, what else? Anybody? What do, you, what, what do you feel? If you were sitting across from that table, what do you got? He speaks relatable to each person. He's very relatable. He's not, he obviously you knows this is one of the Pharisees, you know, and, and Jesus spends a lot of time kind of, you know, you guys are full of dead man's bones and everything unclean. We, we, yeah, you know, there's, there's some shots taken at Pharisees. Um, because it was all about rules and regulations and they're making them up as they went and stuff too. And and yes, he was understanding, he was thoughtful, he was mindful. You know, we kind of talked about this a little bit this morning in, in worship team that, hey, you know, how do we do that in 2022 now? Um, you know, be mindful of maybe somebody sitting across the table that doesn't get maybe what you get. Um, and we were actually talking about it in, in terms of masks and stuff like that and where we are in society and not wanting to upset people, you know. Um, and you know what I mean? It's tough, isn't it? it? Has it ever been tougher than right now? I, I personally don't think so, and I'm, I'm 51-ish. I was like looking over to my shoulder to see if that was actually my, my number. Okay, good. Um, somewhere around there. And, and yet... Here, you know what took me uh, any more before before I jump on to Judy. Donald, when he is love, even while he's talking, he's filling you so full of his love. Love, never, yeah. Never ever forget it. How is he expressing that? There's something in the eyes and the smile, and uh, and he he's not driving tax. So he's not. He's actually in humility as the creator of the universe. Coming to that which is questioning him and loving him. Yeah. Amen. It's a nurturing voice, not a condemning one. Yes. In a, yes, and not a condemning voice, but a, a respectful, humble, humble tone. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and it, it, that, that can be one that we forget in a pandemic, too, because we all get our, we get our, we get our mindset, and we want to we kind of maybe you know, drive my mindset. Um, I haven't been guilty of that. Okay, maybe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I have. Please forgive me. All right? Um, because it's really not about that, is it? Because I, I love this 
I'm going I'm to point out something else that stuck out to me. <clears throat> we would love if Jesus just ended the pandemic, right? We would be like, yes, thank you. But do you know from this passage, I, I actually understand Jesus didn't come to end the pandemic. No. That's not his interest. It's not his goal. We would love to end divisiveness about money and mandates. We'd love to, to, you know, but this conversation, if it were Jesus today, it would sound something like this. I don't mean to disappoint, but I did not come to deliver you from coronavirus. I came to deliver my people from their sin. I didn't come to deliver you from dying. Dying is a gateway to get to where God is. Well, for some, dying will be a gateway to get to hell. And we get to make a decision where we'll spend eternity. And this is where wisdom comes in. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Make sure I am right. So, am I delivered from sin? People are going to die. I hate to tell you that today. We've seen it this week. We'll see more of it. People are going to die of COVID. People are going to die of vaccines. People are going to die in car accidents. People are going to die of heart attacks. People are going to die. There's only one thing that, that matters. Did they know Jesus and his forgiveness from sin? That's all that matters. If you're taking notes, there's your line. Here's what matters. Am I delivered from sin? Or am I still a profoundly good sinner? Am I professional at it? Worse yet, will I hold to my sin to the point where I live eternally separated from God? There, a little bit of godly fear is wisdom. We get the wisdom by reading his word and believing in it. Amen. 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 Point number one, become new in 22. That's great. That's my continual challenge, right? And yours, right? But on January 2nd, aren't your, uh, your gifts that you got for Christmas on the 25th, are they new or are they, they somewhat old this morning? Yeah, they're a little bit old. Some of you haven't used them yet. If you got something for ice fishing, you probably haven't, you know, you know skipped, you know. Don't try that yet. You'll be walking on water with Jesus. Some things that we got are already broken in. But, you know, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, I love this. This step, there's one thing that does not grow old. It's new every morning. This steadfast, you got this up, by the way. Let's read this together. This steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Sorry, I got the song in my head. Sorry, I almost have to say that twice. Anybody else with me? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Why did I start this so high? They are new every morning. New every morning. How about those shoes you got for Christmas? If every morning you just came out there like brand new. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. Uh, you have a newness available to you. I have a newness available to me. But too often I'm not renewing my spirit with his newness. Forgive me, God. Point number two. Others are made new through you in 22. <clears throat> Others are made new. You have the opportunity to help somebody become new through you. Jesus didn't come to just claim God's promises. He came to fulfill them. Jesus didn't come just to claim purity for people. He came to be purity. Jesus didn't come to claim accomplishments. He came to accomplish the Father's will and obliterate sin. Now, you and I aren't God, so we can't do all those things for everybody. I'm not asking you to be God, but God does say Go and do some things. And here it is, John 3, 16. The very next verse after this passage is, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him, the snake raised down that pole back in the day, to cause healing. 
Jesus would be lifted. He was, he was saying how he would die. Anyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So point number two, others made new through you how? By receiving the amazing love. Amen. And then sharing that amazing love. Later on in this uh, book of John, we've got John chapter 15, where Jesus says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. And here's where, hey, you're not God, but I'm asking you to do something on behalf of God. Jesus himself says, you didn't choose me. I chose you to go and bear much fruit, fruit that will last. That's going and doing something. That's being a part. That's letting the Spirit of God through you touch other people. Amen? And whatever you ask in my name, my Father will give you. This is my command. Say it with me. Love each other. One, two, three. Love each other. And God says, I'll sort the rest out later. Amen? Amen. Hey, somebody doesn't agree with me about how things are going in the world. It doesn't say stay divided over things that are happening in the world. It says love each other. And I know that's extremely hard to separate out. But I saw a post on Facebook that actually helped me this week. Another pastor on our district put it on. It was a rock that said love each other. And in the parentheses, I'll sort out the rest later. Love God. You know, right? Amen? Anybody? Help us. Love each other. Let God sort out the, the mess later. But do our part. Share eternal life, God's love. How? Through love and mercy. And, and remember the, the first video that we showed you. This is where I'm just bringing it around real quick as we close. The first video we showed you, if you didn't catch all the words, I'm going to just throw them at you, spit, you, spit them at you in, in a love background. Here we go. Don't claim God's promises. Fulfill them in love. Choose prefer sacrifice. That's what love means. The agape love. Don't just claim God's promises. Oh, God, you got something great for me. No. Fulfill God's promise. What? To seek and save that which is lost. To share the love of God that died on the cross. His Son, who was sent in the world, not to condemn the world, but to save it through Him. Be the new song of His love, right? Be a fresh start for somebody. Model it. Model that. Somebody helped you along the way, didn't they? Raise your hand if somebody helped you along the way get a fresh start. Amen. Like almost all of us. Could I be that fresh start? That person that helps somebody along the way. It's going to cost you some time. It's going to cost you energy. It's going to probably cost you money. But would you do it anyway? Would we do it anyway? Help me, Jesus. 2022, to be a part of somebody's story. Be the goal of hope. Be the one, hey, no pressure. <laughs> Go back to point number one if you feel pressure. Go back to point number one. Lord, renew me in spirit. If at if it, any time you go, oh my goodness, God, I, don't, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. If I feel way too much pressure. Go back to point number one. Be new in 22 in your spirit. Have time with the indeed, with your Bible, with some studies, with iron sharpens iron, with each other, amen? And become new. There's some new habits that need to be formed by us this year, amen? Anybody need some new habits? Yeah, yeah. Lord, expose those, show us how to do them with tenacity and see them through to the end. Be the new mercy for somebody and be God's hands, feet, voice. Be his text, right? Be his. Hey, I haven't seen you lately. How are you doing, brother so-and-so? Amen? I haven't seen you in church. How's it been? God bless you. I'm with you. Oh, Whoa, you got, a, you, you got a COVID situation? Is there anything I can drop off on your front porch? How many of you done that? <laughs> Probably all of you in this room. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you dropped a, you know, our front porch. So it was four weeks we were off back in the day. Thank you. Keep being 
the hands and the feet and the voice. Speak the words that you choose as speaking the very words of God. One closing illustration. I was uh, I was going to Quinlan's to get my script, and anybody drive up to Quinlan's and see somebody pulling right in front of you? <laughs> Nope, just me. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> it happened to be somebody pulled in in front of me, and I, I pulled it off as quick as I could, and threw it in the park, jumped out of the truck, and locked the door, and I started jiving to the door. Why? I got to beat the Baptist to show these, man. I, I got to beat that lady that drove, drove in, because there's going to be a long line when I get into this prescription place, right? Anybody? Just me. <laughs> I'm great. You guys are making me feel like a really horrible sinner here. So in the middle of my thought, I've got to beat this lady or I'm going to be late for my appointment. I start jogging. And in that motion of jogging, my glasses fall off where I usually keep them right here. And in one swift motion, by the time I realized they fell off, my foot was already in motion. And they fell just fortuitously for my next step to be like... <sighs> <laughs> That's exactly what I just heard an angel in heaven go. <laughs> God, I see you did that. That was a good one. Then you're gonna try that again. Nope. That selfish little man. Oh God, she just beat told. You to the door, didn't you? Oh, she beat me everywhere. She... <laughs> it, it, then it became a really funny moment. It was only six dollars subscript, yeah. no script. You, you, you. So I didn't lose a lot of money in that. But God got my attention, and He's like. Dude, try not to beat people up to, to, to the prescription place. <laughs> Number one. Number two, could, could you go in there and just be on my time frame and just minister to whoever's standing in line? I was like, I will now. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a long one. There was like four people in front of me. So it was almost out to the door when you figure how many feet you got to stand apart from one another. But I got to see so many people in that moment and for the next several moments. I'm gonna, so I say that to incriminate myself. So anybody else have a story you'd like to share at this time? No, I didn't think so, you pious group. All right, listen, God got a hold of me and he did just what Stacy did and laughed right out loud when that happened. I just shook my head all the way in like, um, and there's a, a scope of embarrassment. You're like, oh, God. Yeah, I just rubbed my glasses right into the asphalt. That was awesome. The lens actually came out, so I spent the rest of the time trying to pop it in on the way in. Just so I could see with one eye whatever I'm signing at the end. God, I, that was God's reminder. You still got some, some room to grow. In 2022. Anybody with me? Yes, I heard that scream from a small child like that. So uh, as we as we close this morning, nothing heavy. Hey, Jesus already paid the price. He loves you to death. His mercies, his love are new every morning. Why don't we, instead of just claiming those promises, not only claim them, how about we add to it? Lord, I'm going to claim them for me, but then I want something new through you in 22. Something new through you in 22. God, how do you want to use me in my children's life? In that broken relationship that's in my family unit? God, oh, hey God, you know what? Holding out for them to say they're sorry. And God's like, stop running with your glasses on like that. You're going to crush them. Why don't you be the one to say, hey, forgive me. Because you believe you did nothing wrong. That's okay. The Son of God sat across from some dude who didn't understand who he was and used humility to get through to him. In the same way, whoever is taking you to task, can you love them enough that if his mercies are new every morning, your mercies are new every morning? Because if he does a new work in me and fills me with love and mercy, then they should flow. Amen? Amen. Okay, quiet. Jesus, as we close, help us 
to be filled with your mercy and your love and your power and your anointing. May they be new every morning in my life. Do something new in me. And then, Lord, would you do something new through me, please? Give us a new attitude. Lord, if there'd be some kind of <clears throat> double standard that we've been living, maybe a poor habit that's going on in our lives right now, that you're like, hey, that, we know that is a place you got. <clears throat> Lord, we want that to be removed right now, as far as the east is from the west. Come and, and cleanse my heart, oh God. Start right there. Do something new in my spirit. And then, Lord, use me to bring a newness, a joy, an abundance to a life that knows you not. To a life that's lived in distress. A life that's lived without the light of you. Help me to bring that light to their lives. I can't be the one that fills them now. I don't want to be God. But I want to be used of you. So when you fill us with your love and your mercy, may it overflow into others' lives in 22, in ways that we couldn't even imagine. Be with all those right now who are at different places, celebrating, uh, coming into the new year. They're out with family members. They're out um, at, at different places right now. We pray that your spirit will be with them and that you will protect them and bless them and keep them. And Lord, I pray that as we step into 22, we do so with the authority of Christ. I pray that we do so with more of your power and precision than we've ever done in our entire lives. This is the year of the Lord, 2022, and we celebrate it one day at a time, one moment at a time, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right, back to the verse of the year. I don't know if you're not going to have that up there, are you? For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. See if you can pull that off with me. For God did not give us, a, give us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. Love, power, sound mind. Love, power, sound mind. Love, power, sound mind. I need all those things. And get that spirit of fear out of here. Amen? So as we go, go live. Love, power, sound mind. In Jesus' name, God bless you.